The issue of net neutrality is a burning one. That debate has been going on for some time. But let's uh, look a little bit more futuristically in uh, different kinds of scenarios. How net neutrality, if it's revoked, if it stays, what happens to the marketing landscape, more importantly, the digital marketing landscape. To understand that, I have a great panel with me here uh, in Mumbai and in Bangalore. Uh, K.V. Sridhar, Chief Creative Officer at Sapien Nitro, joins us here in Mumbai. So does Rajiv Dhingra, the founder and CEO of What Consult, which of course is part of uh, Denso Ages now. And uh, in Bangalore, Ashok Lala is with us. He's a digital marketing consultant, formerly uh, global head of digital marketing at Infosys. So great to have you all with us. Ashok, I want to uh, begin by asking you, where do you stand in the debate? Because, uh, you know, it's been going back and forth. But uh, I want to understand from each of you where you stand, starting with you, Ashok. Well, um, you know, I stand in the position of a very, very keen observer. Uh, I'm not really taking sides yet, but uh, I, I wear a marketer's hat, as you know, and I also wear a consumer's hat. So really, whichever way it goes, success or failure will be dependent on what consumers choose. Uh, marketers, telecom companies, social networks can package what they want. It's, it's how it's adopted, how much it's adopted, how quickly and effectively it's adopted one way or the other that will actually uh, make or break for success. So really, uh, you know, when the Internet started uh, in India, no one thought it will be 200 million people. Uh, uh, now it is 200 million people and people are talking of the next billion. So really, how it rolls out is a matter of uh, wait and watch. Uh, but I'm one for freedom of the internet, to freedom of choice to consumers. And regardless of whether marketers give the freedom to consumers, they always choose at the end of the day. Right. So it sounds very good to kind of say that. But realistically, and KV Sridhar, you've been around for a very, very long time. So to understand the landscape, and like uh, Ashok is pointing out as well, this is crucial, right? This is this possibly could be a turning point in the way we look at the entire landscape, as it were. How are you viewing it, and where do you stand in the debate? Well, I would say that there are no two hats. There's only one hat, which is the consumer's hat. Um, I think at the end of the day, this day and age, the power lies with people. And if you try to do anything to tamper that, you'll be a fool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's, that's a lesson uh, for everyone. And net neutrality, you know, we just started the debate. I don't think that people understand, marketers understand, it's even the uh, the implications of that. Do our lawmakers understand? Do we understand? Do consumers understand to make a so choice? So what are the essential elements that we're missing out on, you think? I think we're jumping the gun too much, mm -hmm. you know, one after another. You know, first is net neutrality, and then came the free basics. Right. And then now the debate is shifted and petitions have been given to people, you right. know, to, to the organizations. Okay. I think we are, I mean, everything is happening so quickly and then so rapidly sure. that, that you are hardly giving any time for people to digest right. what it means and the implications of that. Right. So I think that will have a huge impact. You know, mm -hmm. if you push anything um, by force onto the people, people will realize sooner or later and it's going to have a huge backlash. Rajiv, you deal a lot with your clients, yeah. yes, and in the sense that you're kind of working with them. You have been for some time now. Yeah. What's the sense that you're getting from them? So uh, I think most uh, clients currently are fence sitters. Uh, as consumers, I think most of us agree with the sense that uh, internet was born free and is meant to be free for everyone. Right. Right. Not the free that Facebook wants it to be right. through free basics, but in general, it needs to be. Uh, no conditions apply. Sure. And largely, if you see internet across the world, it is like that, mm -hmm. right? In fact, uh, uh, across the world, there is a, a underground internet also where, you know, all the things that are illegal in life are also available. You know, sure. I mean, that's what the power of the web is. You can't stop anything happening from right. there, right? right? Um, but from a client's perspective, I think uh, even they don't know where this is headed. Sure. They understand the consumer perspective because they are a consumer today. But as a marketer, they are not sure whether the power of uh, reach in the hands of a few publishers by virtue of them providing free internet is a good thing or a bad thing. Right. Because on one end, it expands the internet and brings its reach to more people. But, but on the other hand, it leaves power in the hands of few. Right. 
uh, when it comes that, to publisher. That seems like a dangerous proposition if you look at it from the outside as a basic premise. But looking at the possibility of the revocation of net neutrality and what kind of impact it could possibly have on the digital marketing landscape. Ashok, how do you see this? Because uh, you've been consulting on uh, digital marketing for a while now. Where do you think this could go if uh, indeed we live in a scenario where net neutrality gets revoked? Well, obviously, uh, you know, marketers will go where consumers are and say net neutrality gets revoked and free basics comes through. That doesn't mean marketers are going to just hop onto that bandwagon. Consumers need to hop onto it first. And we must remember this debate is going on amongst people who are not going to be the users of free basics. So all the chatter that we're actually hearing is not amongst the billion who may or may not adopt it. And that's something to keep in mind. Most marketers take a wait and watch strategy. Like in all marketing, there'll be the early adopters. They'll be the ones that will jump on to whichever channel there are consumers. There'll be ones to wait for peers to do it. There'll be ones to see whether there's traction. And at the end of the day, you know, the consumer will be made the product at some point, one way or the other. And uh, marketers will, will, will try and leverage that with the data they can get through social networking, um, analytics, uh, and, and go, you know, wherever the consumers are uh, and follow maybe the lead of somebody. Some people will be laggards. You know, the, the marketing evolution curve right. will not be different. Right. So I this. want to understand, Pops, how do you see this? Because like he's pointing out, some of them will be leaders. The others will be laggards. When you're looking at the leaders, are you looking at the larger players who will obviously set the pace, as it were? And like this entire debate has been pointing out that the startups and India has so many of them and you're looking at the possibilities that exist in the advertising world as well because they are getting the funding. They are putting that money into advertising and marketing. So if they're not given the right opportunity, how does it kind of uh, queer the pitch, as it were, when you're talking about net neutrality and that getting revoked? Do they stand to lose? Of course they will lose. Uh, of course, you know, when you have an unfair play, See, today it is not about what value additions you can add to your product. It is all about what values you stand for. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, the connection between a brand and then the consumer will happen at a higher level of values. And by force, if you go onto the publishers and then you know push your brand and then your and then seen with the guys who are monopolizing, then consumers will actually get away from you. Mm -hmm. So in a longer run, it's not a playable game because in, a, in this world, which is completely transparent, unless you stand for values, really live by them, people are not going to embrace. It does not matter whether you live in a small village or whether you live in a, in a bigger town. Right. This entire debate today is focused by elite people. And these are not the people who are going to use free basics anyway. These are the people trying to influence the policy makers. Sure. So right now the debate is at this level. Of course, it will take long time for people who are actually going to use any of these uh, are going to first adopt, second learn, third, you know, act upon their learning and knowledge. Sure. So it is a long journey. Right. At the time that Airtel Zero came in, there was an upsurge of uh, reaction to it. And some of that, you know, like you pointed out earlier as well, that you know, people haven't understood exactly what it means, but it just qu put a huge question mark on the topic of net neutrality. What was the reaction at that point in time? See, and Flipkart very quickly withdrew. Yes. That made a huge noise. That made people really, really put the doubt and then saying that, is there anything? You know, why uh, uh, suddenly when it started making news, you know, ATL Zero, the brand started retracting. Correct. Correct. The moment public opinion started forming, and then brand started, that's an indication of what is going to come. Right. So is it eventually going to be about how the consumer perceives it, not necessarily, you know, being able to kind of uh, separate the wheat from the chaff and saying this is right and this is wrong and this is how it should work? Because like uh, Pops is pointing out as well, Ashok, this is a very complex issue. So unless the consumer understands it fully, you're not ever going to be able to reach a scenario where everyone is on board. And considering that being the case, for a consumer to decide whether he stands, whether he or she stands for or against it, 
How are marketeers really going to understand this kind of scenario? Are they just going to wait and watch like you're pointing out? Or is there going to be a strategy at uh, play that is something that you would suggest to your clients perhaps? So really, uh, you know, there will be marketers who may wait and watch because they want to be doing the right thing or, or not being seen to do the wrong thing because of this whole media kind of noise about what it is. But eventually, they will gravitate to where their consumers are. Consumers will, may gravitate to uh, free basics if it happens, but may stay with it or not because they always make choices. They always evolve. They always get more sophisticated. And we have seen the digital uh, consumer in India uh, has evolved uh, very uniquely to the rest of the world, but has evolved meaningfully, has made choices, and uh, you know, has really grown the whole market and has grown it to a scale where there is this debate in the first place. Correct. So that will really uh, continue. We'll continue our discussion here on the net neutrality debate, but that's happening right after this small break. Do stay with us. Welcome back to this edition of our show from Logo to Impact. And this is where we're discussing net neutrality and how it's likely the various scenarios are likely to alter the digital marketing landscape as well. Joining us on the show, of course, uh, K.V. Sridhar, Pops as he is popularly known, Rajiv Dhingra and Ashok Lala is joining us from Bangalore. So a brand stand on the entire net neutrality debate is really coming into play, right? Because that is... Uh, clearly setting the perception and it's altering perceptions as well. When Facebook puts its entire might, as it were, on this entire campaign that they are running right now, how is that viewed? Because at this point in time, they seem to be pushing it very, very strongly. The kind of advertising blitzkrieg that we've seen right now is phenomenal. How do you think Facebook as a brand pushing through free basics in India is being perceived now? See, if the government of India were to do it, subsidize internet like the way you get you know gas and kerosene electricity everything subsidized then people would have not asked a question you have to be selfless to be selfish mm -hmm. now in this case you are selfishly selfish correct and it oozes you know that smells of selfishness so that is what people are rejecting you know no matter how much pressure they put um, this is not the time for them to win because, uh, you know, they, they are bringing every defense. You know, today they have said uh, that we will even allow a Google and then Yahoo to be on, on the thing. Correct. And then we will allow competitors to be as part of the package. And then we will expand the uh, websites from 14 to 40. Sure. And then we will have an open scrutiny. So how much they can go? And each one is trying to actually tell you that here I am, invested huge monies in that, and then I am seeing far more dollars, then I want to guard this. Correct. You know, that is a very bad place for any brand to be right. in this world. So that uh, is what is going wrong with uh, Facebook, this aggressive push. Right. And, you know, we're finding every brand take a stance on where they stand on net neutrality. So brand positioning is altering even as we speak. Every time that you take that stand, you say exactly where you're placed in this entire debate. You find that more and more when it comes to brand positioning and the crucial aspects of the debate, where they stand and why they stand where they are is becoming very important. Do you need to put yourself out there and say what you're all about? Uh, I think uh, brands that do realize that uh, this would create an alternate internet are putting themselves out there and brands that know that they won't be part of this alternate internet are in their self-interest acting and putting uh, opposing uh, you know uh, free basics or uh, right. promoting net neutrality sure. consumers who have nothing to do no incentive are doing it because they see what's wrong with it right right um, facebook is doing uh, uh, you know is putting a mask of selflessness and as uh, uh, you know kv pointed out they are trying to uh, be as selfish as they can be in the short term. I think in, if you ask me my personal point of view, even as a business, I think Facebook is making a mistake because uh, if you do this, 
temporarily you may get a lot of users but in the longer term you will always be looked at someone who tried and controlled large portions of people's experiences by force right. rather than by natural intent. Ashok, you think uh, Facebook is making a mistake uh, with the way they are uh, going hammer and tongs with uh, the promotion of free basics? Yeah, I think uh, the way they're going hammer and tongs is certainly hurting the brand perception uh, amongst uh, marketers, amongst uh, advertisers who are their, the, you know, the main cache of revenue. And regardless of whether face, uh, free basics goes through or not, marketers and advertisers are now taking a kind of a very uh, stance towards Facebook, and that's not going to really benefit them in terms of their business interests or in advertiser support, uh, even for the main uh, Facebook platform that they run so successfully so far. So it is hurting them, and they need to quickly, quickly change tracks, maybe beg forgiveness, maybe get an Indian head to actually kind of beg forgiveness for them uh, and backtrack, you know, before they kind of move forward. So the consultation paper that uh, TRA has uh, put forth and we're seeing exactly how this goes, but ultimately do you think the onus lies with the government uh, to set the pace as it were when it comes to uh, freedom to access the net? And if that is the case, then, you know, as far as the government is concerned, it, the ball is in their court to be able to get more and more people onto the internet. And that is not something that corporates need to worry about. Do you believe that that's the stance that India needs to take? And do you think this is a universal stance as well? See, India is a very different country. You know, you have uh, rich and poor coexist, literate and illiterate coexist. We have modernity and tradition coexist. It's a very strange country. Though we are capitalistic today, but the heart of India is still socialistic. Right. So therefore, you know, the rural and then justice, equality, and then certain opportunity, and uh, subsidizing that, and then giving people an opportunity to be connected, to be benefited out of that, lies purely on the government. You know, government has to do something uh, to really subsidize and send 1 GB, 2 GB, 10 GB worth of data money to everybody's bank account, like they are doing for gas. Right. You know, you use the first GB free, and then after that, you know, you pay for it. Right. Whether the mechanism is going to be directly to the consumers sure. or or uh, to the uh, telecom operators, let them decide. I think it's the government um, who need to decide that what is the kind of freedom the citizens must have, right. and who need to take the mantle of subsidizing and then providing free internet to the country. Is it a corporate or is it, it is like asking any of the coal miners to really, you know, solve the country's power problems. Right. Uh, you correct, can't you leave can. it to them to be able to Absolutely. decide such an important issue. Right? Absolutely. In fact, uh, I totally agree with uh, KBR and I in fact want to say that it would be so much in interest of Facebook if it were to uh, let government take a lead to create a program of uh, free internet. Uh, be a participant and a sponsor or all the money that they're spending on advertising they would pretty much uh, make a public donation of that and on the internet in any case if you see today Facebook is one of the top sites right it's number one number two I mean correct it is going to be a beneficiary in any case sure if internet you know and people will uh, love them more for making such public so donations if they take a government route and already they've made those inroads so they yeah. just need to capitalize on and that instead of saying free basics or a uh, a sort of a watered down internet, put as much money as you want in uh, getting subsidized in internet to rural India, sure. right? And see how that grows. It will definitely, Facebook is going to be, it is the number one social network in the country. It's not going to change that. Even when people are protesting against Facebook, they are doing it on the platform. Right. So, you know, I mean, they have no thing, to, nothing to fear. Right. Right. Uh, I think they need to act how large they are with a large heart. Ashok, uh, why, yes. Why res restrict uh, to only poor countries like India. You know, if they want to show the magnanimity, you know, why can't Google, Facebook, everyone, you know, all of them come together, launch a satellite and then give free internet to every citizen of the, on this planet? Right. Why can't they do that? They're already doing it. If they are well-meaning and they want to make, uh, make the internet the, uh, more yeah. and more accessible, then perhaps uh, the government route to be able to partner with the government and making uh, this uh, possible is something that they can do. You agree with this, Ashok? I totally agree. And I think, uh, you know, uh, Facebook should draw inspiration from its fellow American brand, Google, 
who also has the same intent to tap the next billion, but is doing it in a way which is uh, giving it a lot more credibility and positivity amongst uh, the government, amongst consumers, amongst marketers. And I think it's also important to, 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 to give up on this philanthropy trip and, and, and acknowledge that there is a business behind philanthropy. I think the government and everyone, consumers, marketers, would be far more positive to embrace that because everyone is looking to bring more people on, to do good for people, and while people come on, to get good for themselves. So really, it's, an, uh, it's a symbiotic uh, uh, relationship, but currently, uh, Facebook is coming across like a bit of a parasite trying to prey on, on the poor, on the unconnected billion, and uh, trying to push through its agenda, which in its own interests is not uh, you know, the best thing to do. essentially backfire on the brand, uh, if uh, that's the right uh, usage. But, you know, that's where we're leaving it right now. Well, on this panel discussion, we haven't had the kind of fireworks that one would expect on a debate uh, on net neutrality, considering the way it's been going right now. But even so, we are more or less agreed that the consumer is going to lead the way and the symbiotic relationship between the government and uh, the many uh, parties who would be interested in making the Internet more accessible is perhaps uh, really something that we should be aiming for. Thanks indeed, uh, Pops, for joining us on the show, Rajiv and Ashok as well. But there's lots more coming up on the flip side of a very small break here on the show. Do stay with us.